Most of what I heard about Goblin Slayer were things like, it's about an adventurer slaying goblins, and the general memes and people's fascination with Goblin Slayer's full devotion to killing goblins. How every girl falls for him, but they aren't goblins, so he doesn't give them any attention, and how he'll ruthlessly kill goblins in any way possible. Most of all, I heard about the gruesome scenes portrayed, including a rape scene in its first episode. All of these things are true, but it made the show sound kind of boring and shallow to me. No one had explained what this show was really about, even though it was just as good as they said it was. This recommendation was from friends, it seems a lot of people hate this anime. The first important aspect to Goblin Slayer is its world. The character, Goblin Slayer, is not a whole enough person to carry this entire show. At least not at the beginning. The world is extremely important for this not to become boring. While Goblin Slayer goes from one Goblin Slaying mission to the next, the world is living and existing separate, but also connected to him. The adventure in the guild have their own missions and the reasons for doing them, and we get to see glimpses into their lives throughout the story. But it never gets to the point of detracting from the main story. The small connection to these side characters make the immersion so much deeper, and they are utilized in the story without just feeling like plot points. If you have no knowledge of what the Goblin Slayer anime is, imagine the Mandalorian, except his only code and goal in life is to kill one kind of monster, and this is set in a D&D game. Literally a pencil and paper role-playing game, not just like set in the D&D universe. The story of the world is that gods decided fate based on rolling dice. One of the reasons I so thoroughly enjoyed this, and if you're a fan of these RPGs, I'm sure you would too, is that the story feels so much like the many RPG adventures I've had with my friends. If the author played D&D and then wrote down what happened and adapted it into the story, I would not be surprised, and thinking about the story in this way makes it so much more fun. I may have a video out soon about the RPG aspects of the story so subscribe. A lot of what I see about the show online are complaints that it's just an edgy, generic battle show that tries too hard to be cool. But I haven't found Goblin Slayer to be generic or edgy at all. I can maybe understand it feeling generic at times, but I don't think it's edgy whatsoever. The characters, my next point, are not generic. Sure, they aren't the deepest or have the best backstories, but they feel real. There doesn't have to be a ton of drama or intrigue around them to know that there was a lot of love and attention put into to these characters. Ultimately, the most important thing for them, and the best part of this anime, in my opinion, is the subtle development of Goblin Slayer's character. Goblin Slayer starts as an extremely closed off man on a mission. He is a public servant for killing goblins. When he was a kid, goblins destroyed his village, and no one was there to save his sister, so he became the person he wishes was there. Now, his whole identity is in killing goblins. Multiple times he states that he kills goblins because he is Goblin Slayer, like a fireman puts out fire a store owner sells products, and a goblin slayer slays goblins. However, he has no other goals or interests in anyone or anything, but through his interactions with his newfound party members, he slowly and subtly starts to open up. It's never portrayed that what he is doing is a bad thing. Goblins need to be kept in check, and he even inspires the most heroic adventures through the tales of his extermination spreading across the land. Instead, it takes a very nuanced approach. Goblin slayer doesn't need to stop and he doesn't need to just let loose either. It shows his diligence is fruitful. It's a great lesson on grinding and doing what you know you have to do when no one else understands. Soon into the story, however, other people do start to understand. And as he adventures with these other people, you can see the relationship start to form, despite his very single-mindedness. Priest Girl especially points out how closed off he is to everyone, and the moments he opens up just a little are so satisfying because of how well earned they are. Beyond the adventures of killing goblins, which are fun in themselves, don't get me wrong, there's a good amount of tension and clever strategy along with decent fights, and all that keeps it interesting. But there's a much more satisfying adventure of seeing a person grow beyond the only characteristic he defines himself by, and in that way, this show and its characters aren't generic at all. A lot of the things I talk about lead into the criticism about it being edgy, which is the biggest false criticism I see about the show. It isn't overly gratuitous, the characters don't have any edgy or depressed tones to them, unless you casually glimpse at Goblin Slayer, and the elements of rape, which, although an uncomfortable topic, is really respectfully used. I never thought it glorifies it, and if it's something that would bother you to see it portrayed, definitely don't watch the show. But as far as actual rape scenes, it is literally used only once in the entirety of the movie 
movie and anime. It's alluded to, hinted at in flashbacks, you see the goblin's victims, but full detailed nudity is never actually shown, and I never felt like it was trying to make them look sexy. The camera actually takes special care to show as little of them as possible after the first graphic scene. The adventurers always prioritize rescuing the victims, covering them up, and getting them out as soon as they are found. Though the goblins did tear, or attempt to tear, clothes off of a woman more than once during a fight, it's more for continuity, that's what the goblins do to women, than trying to be for fan service. I'm not saying there isn't fan service in this show, there are a few hot spring scenes and there is a fan service character, although she is important to the story in a lot of other ways. The first episode is the most guilty of being just for shock factor, but it did need to show us how bad the goblins are, and it did that very well. After it made its point, it was no longer necessary to go into that much detail again. The entire reason this is part of the plot is based on Goblin Slayer's character. There are plenty of monsters and threats in the world that kill people, so why only slay goblins? Goblins not only kill people, they raid villages, kidnap women, and horribly abuse them. Most think of goblins as a low-level monster, but they are the worst kind of monster. Goblin Slayer's obsession perfectly makes sense considering the circumstances. I don't really know how it could have worked otherwise. As for the gore, it was pretty tame throughout the entire show. Like, yeah, it was violent, but I wouldn't say it was much more, if any more violent, than Demon Slayer. In conclusion, I would say I love the show so much, because I have an affinity for stories that mostly involve people hanging out. It feels like getting to hang out with friends again whenever I watch Goblin Slayer, Elf Girl, Lizard Man, the Dwarf, and the Priestess all going to slay some goblins. The chemistry is great, and it doesn't rely on conflicts between them or having complicated history to make them interesting. The conversations are fun, and it's not much more complicated than that. It's not boring, which is the important part, so the lack of really in-depth focus on these characters, letting them grow in subtle and slow ways, is a breath of fresh air. It's a truly unique story for being good without being very dramatic. If you like pencil and paper RPGs or just classic adventuring style shows, try it out and see if you're likely to fall in love with Goblin Slayer like I have. Hey everyone, I'm Weez. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate you watching this far. Let me know in the comments what you think of Goblin Slayer or if I convinced you to watch it. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao meow!